Hey Kids Own kids and families, welcome to my video this week. I'm going to be showing you some Sephardic recipes. Um, these are recipes with Spanish roots and I'm cooking out of uh, one of my favorite cookbooks, which is The Family Meal. And this book um, is special because it was produced in one of the most well-recognized restaurants in the world, um, but they're very um, approachable and easy. So. Um, this first, the recipe I'm cooking for myself for dinner is this um, salmon stew with lentils, but it has two component recipes in it, um, two sauces that are needed to make it, which are also um, described in the book. So those are picada and sofrito. So um, these two are very essential Spanish recipes and the recipes that um, Sephardic Jews brought with them when they were expelled from Spain in 1492, they brought the recipes around the world during their exile from Spain. Sephardic Jews made their way through North Africa to the Baltic region, back into the Middle East, and to the Americas. The Inquisition is an extremely tragic and important part of Sephardic history. The first thing I'm going to prepare are all the onions and garlic I'll need for both uh, sauces. Um, I'm going to need four and a half cups of onion for the sofrito and eight or ten cloves of garlic in total. A nice trick is using estimation instead of measuring all of your ingredients. One onion is roughly a cup and one bulb of garlic has roughly eight to 10 cloves. While I was cooking, I also did a little multitasking. I take a Ladino course, which is the Sephardic language um, online. And this has been going for the past five weeks. So you can hear that here a little bit. Pasharo, or pasharico with that diminutive ico. Quantos um, pasharicos tengo? So we're gonna start with this. I see some hands up already, but I'll, I'll get to the activity itself in a moment. So the word cuantos means how many, and you'll see here that there's some agreement between how many... I really enjoyed being able to learn online and to be able to teach with you guys. So these are some of the words that uh, you may have heard in the video thus far. My family left Spain in 1492 um, after their expulsion and made their way across the Mediterranean to a city called Salonika, which became known as the Jerusalem of the Balkans because of its large Jewish population. In the background, you can see me crushing some garlic. This is an essential step. It releases a chemical called allicin within the garlic, and that's gonna boost the flavor profile. Take the garlic you crushed and put it to the side. You're going to need it for both of the recipes. So I'm going to take the onions and get to work on those. And you'll see me chopping this onion up. Hold on a second. So we need to take a look at my cutting technique. I was making a deliberate error that you can see here. And I was cutting with my fingertips out. Now. That's not very safe because we don't want to cut any part of our finger. So instead, always make sure to keep your fingers down and make a knuckle on top of the onion or any other vegetable you might cut. I took the eight and a half cloves of garlic I need for the sofrito and I passed it through a garlic crusher. Now I'm taking my blender and filling it with the four and a half cups of onions that I prepared. And I'm going to blend these into a very smooth puree. Now I'm over at the stove and I am going to put a, my oil in the pan and saute or fry my garlic. I want to see some color, but I do not want to burn the garlic. So you'll definitely notice these things uh, in your nose and those smells are the best way to um, learn how to cook. When you learn the right smell, you'll just know when something is done. But you can also use um, visual cues like the golden brown color that you want to see. So here's my sofrito. It's um, been going for about 20 minutes. And I know this it doesn't seem that way with how sped up this is. 
but I then added the first part of my tomatoes. This recipe calls for you to add tomatoes in two batches, giving the sauce some time to simmer in between. So the flavors are really building here, and you develop a sauce with a really lovely and complex flavor. I won't be showing you how to cook the salmon stew that I'm making in the background in some clips. However, I will post the recipes in the video description. I'll let the sofrito cool and move on to the picado. So first, we will fold a little aluminum packet, and this is going to be for toasting our saffron threads. On the stove, I'm using this little cast iron pan, and you just need a few seconds. You absolutely want to be careful not to burn your saffron because it's the most valuable spice on the planet. Thankfully, we just need two teaspoons, which only costs a few dollars. First, I'm going to add the parsley to the blender. You'll see the saffron going in, and then some oil and the hazelnuts. Again, I'll post, post these recipes so you can follow along. And you're gonna blend this um, until it's pretty evenly blended. Uh, my blender is old and it only does so much. Ideally, this would be done in a food processor or even with a mortar. Now you've got two finished sauces that have a wide variety of applications in Spanish and Spanish adjacent cuisines like Sephardic cuisine. And I wrap those sauces up and put them in the freezer. You can use a variety of containers. Here are a few pictures of the salmon stew that I made from the cookbook using both sauces, the picado and the sofrito. Okay, everyone, that wraps up this video of Sephardic Cooking with Jack. Thank you for joining me. I really look forward to seeing what you all are cooking. Please send some pictures to the zine and comment below. As we say in Ladino, Inglene Adios!